Welcome to our CHASE presentation. CHASE stands for Computer Hazard and Security Evaluation and it's a visual approach to better understanding of cybersecurity vulnerabilities and risks in conjunction with process safety or loss of containment. My name is David Hatch of Process Safety Integrity and this has been developed with my colleague Andy Geddes. So firstly, the goal is to illustrate complex and critical relationships between your industrial automated control system and your process and plant. To break down the knowledge silos between the IT, OT and what we're calling PT or physical technologies. To engage all the stakeholders regardless of their specialism, whether they're IT people or whether they're um, process or plant experts. And ultimately the goal is to make cybersecurity risks and the potential effects, the impact on process safety or asset integrity more understandable. And the more understandable they are, then in theory, the better they can be managed and where you have a better understanding you can make better decisions where to deploy your limited resources based on a risk ranking which initially could be qualitative but in the future could be potentially quantitative so starting off with our phased approach so we've got initially scoping and screening and we use the familiar Microsoft Visio platform and that gives us a sense of the physical and logical um, architecture, um, what our process and plant looks like and the controls that um, overlay that. Then we've got a logical assessment using in this case, Bowtie XP. So looking at bow ties around the, the logical assets, the IACS, the Industrial Automation Control System. And we can use that to develop um, risk assessments um, at different um, levels of detail. Then we can tie that into the physical assessment, again, using bow ties to look at the process safety or asset integrity impact of a um, logical or digital breach, how that affects the control and protection system and how those um, challenges, those, those cyber threats can actually degrade the um, physical and, and logical barriers. So here's a typical gas treatment process and we've got gas coming in, it's separated so that the gas itself is treated and any liquids are either returned back um, upstream to the process or sent forward for further treatment. So we've got a sort of major process train here and then we've got some ancillary systems here, some utilities, um, power, um, air, um, drains, etc. So you'll see that a, a familiar process can be condensed down into a block diagram, a topological representation. If we superimpose on that our um, potential hazards, and they could be major accident hazards, they could be loss of essential services, if you're some kind of national infrastructure, you've got the potential for environmental damage or commercial and reputational damage. So simply um, colour coding and uh, showing this simple four shape representation, you can see um, either at a really high level, so is that hazard applicable or not, or in more detailed level, is it high, medium or low or no impact. You can get an immediate sense of where the potential areas of concern are. So where you've got hydrocarbons, then you, you may expect to see major accident potential. Uh, where you've got more inert systems, then potentially 
you, you're not so concerned on major accidents, but you could have um, loss of essential services. This is simply an example to illustrate the principle. Now, what you can do is you can superimpose on that physical topology uh, the digital relationship. So your um, IACS, whether it be for safety instrumented systems, so this safety instrumented system um, supervises these assets. Or we've got a basic process control system looking over the flares, or we've got another basic process control system overseeing this train. Um, another combined BPCS SIS looking after these utilities. So this view gives you an immediate sense of the relationships between the, the logical and the physical. So looking next at the more familiar system architecture, this representation is from the UK Health and Safety Executive OG86 which encourages or requires duty holders to develop a system architecture of their um, control system or their safety system. So here you'll see a sort of familiar hierarchical representation, but just like our physical uh, process can be condensed into a more simple topology, we don't really need to know whether we've got four screens or two screens or you know, how many racks there are there, we can collapse this down to, again, a simple topology, a block diagram of our logical or digital assets. So we're taking the same information, but condensing that down into this relationship. And here again, we've got the, the logical um, and the physical down here. So we've got these physical assets and their relationship to the digital assets. So all the I.O. from here is feeding down into these individual physical assets. So just as we did before with the physical assets, we can put on the hazards. So again, you've got this immediate sense of where there's most red. That's obviously the most concerning aspects and therefore the most significant digital assets. What we're now looking at is the um, UK National Cyber Security Centre Cyber Assessment Framework. So we're using that to gauge good practice, looking at four key elements, managing, protecting, detecting, and minimizing. And the, the CAF, the Cyber Assessment Framework, allows you to self-assess, I guess, a number of objectives. And we're using those, so depending how many of these objectives have been achieved or not achieved gives you a vulnerability. So applying that vulnerability to your digital assets, you can see here um, these four elements, management, protection, recovery, detection. So red is very high vulnerability, so not many objectives have been achieved. Uh, green is very low vulnerability, a high number of objectives have been achieved. So again, you've got this really immediate sense of where I've got most green, I'm in control of my um, digital assets, where I've got red, I'm more concerned about my vulnerability. So what we then do is we, we take a simple approach of combining the consequence and the vulnerability the conventional approach to, to risk is severity and likelihood. So the severity we can take from the physical hazards, but the likelihood is difficult to predict because technology is changing, the political environment, the social environment is changing. So we're not so sure about how to gauge the potential likelihood for attack. So we've kind of flip this in its head and say, let's say likelihood is proportionate to vulnerability. The more vulnerable you are, the weaker your um, controls, then you could infer you've got a higher likelihood of attack. Obviously, the potential for attack depends on, on how attractive you are as a target. So you could evolve that in more detail, looking at some factors from the NIST guidance. So look at the attacker's capability, the intent, 
their targeting potential, but also the relevance of your assets. Again, how attractive are you to attack? So again, we could just take a real simple approach, taking the hazard consequence and the digital or logical vulnerability to give us this simple risk matrix. So if we visualize that, we've got our hazards down the bottom. We are combining the vulnerability from the, the calf um, with these hazards to give us a risk. So we can now see where our digital assets are more risky and that gives us a, a simple prioritization. You want to focus on the IAC assets, IACS assets that are most important to you. You can't tackle everything at once. So you want to prioritize your efforts, go for the quick wins, go for the weakest areas. So moving forward from the scoping and the screening, we've got our um, qualitative screening. Um, now we look at more detail and we're using the bow tie approach. So the bow tie approach is very common within many industries for assessing and managing risk. At the heart of it, you've got a hazard, something with the potential to cause harm. You've got a top event here where you lose control of that hazard. That could be loss of control, loss of containment, for example. The consequences are the negative effects and they could be human consequences, commercial consequences, environmental consequences. The top event is caused by one or more threats and we prevent the threats from becoming top events by having prevention barriers. And once we've lost control of the um, hazard, once we've had the top event, we have mitigation or recovery barriers to either reduce the likelihood or reduce the impact of the consequences. So from a, a digital or cyber perspective, the left hand side is about resistance. It's about prevention. How do you stop that breach? The right hand side is after we've had the breach, how do we um, sustain our resilience and how do we recover from that position? And, and each of these, either side of these, you know, has their own aspects that you've got to consider, both the resistance to attack, but also having been attacked, how do you um, stop it getting worse? How do you minimize the impact? So looking at the, the barriers or the bow ties in a sort of physical approach. So here we've got um, some materials that have the potential to cause harm. There could be, in this case, some flammable material, for example. If we lose containment of that flammable gas from the, the gas treatment process, then that could lead to a major accident event. We could lose essential services. So if you're supplying um, natural gas to the uh, national grid, um, and it could also lead to some damage to the environment, damage to the water, damage to the smoke impact on the air, for example. The cause of that could come from two sources, a conventional, shall we say, non-cyber threat, or it could be because of a cyber attack. So even the non-cyber threats are vulnerable to cyber um, breaches because you may have basic process control systems or alarm systems or protection systems where your cyber attack is defeating or degrading the barriers or your cyber threat is becoming uh, is being realized or is becoming more likely so different ways that cyber can impact on your physical assets. Looking at the logical assets in more detail, the Health and Safety Executive OG86 has in it an appendix which includes the 11 most common threats to industrial automation control systems. So you could use those threats to create a bow tie. And on that bow tie, you could identify the appropriate countermeasures. Again, from OG86, we've simply visualized all the 11 threats and all the countermeasures. From that, you can then look at 
your own, we've called it hygiene, how well you are prepared for such an attack. So is that threat um, credible or applicable, yes or no? And do you have those barriers in place? That's all you're looking for just now, a quick scan of, do we have credible threats? Are we ready for them? Yes or no? And in this case, we've got some actions that need to be um, expedited. Looking at this in more detail, so using the um, NIST um, methodology, there's a, a lot more detail in how NIST do risk assessments. You can now look at not just is the threat credible, yes or no, look at the likelihood. So within the NIST matrix or the NIST scoring system, you can take these characteristics and determine if the threat is very high, medium, low, etc. You can also look at from the CAF the effectiveness of each of these barriers. So get a more detailed sense of the um, threat likelihood and the barrier effectiveness. Taking that forward into our um, combined logical and, and physical relationships. So here, from a, a digital point of view, we've got one bow tie per IACS zone. So here we've got zone five, for example. So we could have direct threats or direct breaches inside the zone, whether they be malicious, accidental, structural or environmental. We could also have indirect breaches through the connected conduits. So for example, a breach in zone four could come into zone five, for example. We have protection and detection measures on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we have our recovery measures. So here we have zone five, which could lead to physical impacts on all the assets that are controlled by Zone 5 IACS. We could also have Zone 5 through the conduit becoming um, a threat to Zone 4. So this simple representation is giving a very clear picture of what's going to challenge, what's going to directly challenge Zone 5 what external or indirect threats could happen on zone five, the impact, the physical impact from zone five, but also the logical impact from zone five through its conduits to any other zones. So carrying forward the physical or the asset side of things, so the zone five breaches here could lead to a loss of control or loss of containment within this particular physical asset. So here we've got our three-phase separator. So we've got here our IACS threats, but we've also got our conventional or non-IACS threats caused by equipment failure, for example, corrosion, human error, external influences like dropped objects, for example. So we've got our threats here. We've got our hazard and top event, and we've got our consequence. So here we are scoring our consequence based on our four areas of concern. Is it a major accident? Is it a loss of essential services, environmental impact, or commercial and reputation? So we've got a matrix here that allows us to score or, or rank the impact, high, medium, or low. That is actually then fed back through the bow ties into our um, logical assets. So summarizing the opportunity, using bow ties, using the visual topological representation, it gives a proportionate and practical um, method to understand and assess the digital and, and physical portfolio. You don't need to be a cyber expert. You don't need to know the nuts and bolts of the physical assets or the bits and bytes of the digital assets. So again, visualizing the scenario makes better understanding, makes 
stronger management. It can be done in stages. It can be scaled up from a high level risk assessment right down to a detailed risk assessment and allows us to tie together these knowledge silos of IT, OT and PT or physical technology. So thank you very much for watching this presentation. My name is David Hatch. If you'd like to know more, my email address is here and you can have a look at our website, itotpt.com. Thank you very much.